Assalamu alaikum, bismillah rahman rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Uh, we want to welcome you all to the final session of today's program, The Heart of the Qur'an. Um, it's a sad, sad time because we are closing this, this class that we've been doing for the last 10 days of Ramadan with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi and Sheikh Yahya Rodas. Um, um, but uh, we are so happy that you all have been able to join us today and uh, hopefully for some of the, the earlier sessions, inshallah. Um, so today we will actually be having both teachers uh, joining us, um, starting with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, who will be reciting Surah Yasin and then reflecting on the closing verses of Surah Yasin. And we'll also have, you know, some final words of advice and uh, teaching from Sheikh Yahya Rodas as well. Um, and uh, inshallah, you know, a concluding dua as well. Um, and we'd love to hear from you after, you know, after the, the class is finished, we would love to uh, kind of have an open mic session and hear your thoughts about the class in general as, as those who have been attending it regularly, inshallah. Um, this, uh, this flyer that you see now um, has been posted on Celebrate Mercy's social media. So you are welcome to share it. Uh, maybe uh, you have friends and family, even if they haven't attended from the beginning of the class, they would still probably benefit so much from today's session, especially in these last verses of Surah Yasin, or they can join in on the recitation or in the closing dua, inshallah. So we wanna encourage you all to really um, share this flyer uh, on WhatsApp, text message, social media, and encourage people to join us, inshallah, especially since we are now in the last day of Ramadan, last day of fasting, the last hours of this blessed month. And inshallah, you know, we, want, we all want to end the month off strongly and, uh, and, and have our friends and family do the same, inshallah. If you've missed any of the previous sessions of this class, you can find them on our YouTube channel. And we want to encourage you guys to follow us on YouTube, inshallah, and uh, click the bell so that you're notified of any more videos and live streams that are coming down, you know, coming coming up, inshallah. So it's very important that you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any of our future programs. And we do have some exciting programs planned for the future. And Celebrate Mercy, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, since mid-March, since this coronavirus pandemic really started spreading in the U.S., we have done so many different programs. Um, that should say seven Friday programs because of yesterday's. So we now have done about almost a hundred hours of programming, uh, teach classes on the, the, the life and the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi this class on Surah Yaseen, Surah, we have Surah Al-Kaf, we have Friday programs, about a hundred hours in 60 days. We even had uh, SubhanAllah Sister Heather who may be joining us today as well. She's been joining these Surah Yaseen classes who had been attending all of our programs, mashallah, throughout Ramadan and she decided on the 29th night, a couple of nights ago, to, um, to become Muslim. So she entered Islam, she embraced Islam, and she took her shahada with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. You can actually view that online at this link, celebratemercy.com slash Heather. And lastly, I'll say that, alhamdulillah, you all have really responded generously, so generously to our fundraising throughout the month of Ramadan. The reason we're emphasizing this fundraising is because Ramadan is the time when we raise the funds that we need for all of our programs throughout the year. Ramadan is our annual fundraising time. So kind of like NPR radio has their time of the year when they, they keep asking for money and pledges. Um, we have our time of the year, that is Ramadan. We are now at 95% of our goal. And inshallah, we really wanna hit that goal because we have some exciting programs planned if we can hit the goal, exciting programs planned. You can read all about them on our Launch Good page, inshallah. Um, but this is our time of the year when we fundraise for the rest of the year's programs. We're at 95%. So a beautiful Eid gift to celebrate mercy would be if we could hit that goal, inshallah, today. If we could hit that goal before Ramadan ends, inshallah, this is the website to do so, celebratemercy.com slash donate. That's celebratemercy.com slash donate. You can give a one time or become a monthly donor, inshallah. The best time for sadaqah, as our Prophet said, is Ramadan. And there's so many benefits to sadaqah, as you know. 
And one added bonus is that you get beautiful gifts for making large donations. Uh, you can learn all about these gifts, art pieces, and look at that hand-done calligraphy by Haji Nuruddin, uh, you know, books and, and things that remind you of the Prophet Sallallahu and to love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, lastly, as you're in today's lesson and recitation, if you want to change how the screen size looks, you can do so, adjust the size of the, 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 the verses we're projecting or the teacher that's projecting, inshallah. Now I'm going to introduce Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, who will start off this final session of the Surah Yasin class. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School. After working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar, he attained numerous ijazas, independent certifications, and studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. Uh, currently, Sheikh Yasser is the Muslim instructor at the Harvard Divinity School, as well as the founder of the Prophetic Living Initiative. So we are very honored to have uh, uh, Sheikh Yasser join us. As I mentioned, Sheikh Yahya Rodas will be joining us later in the program. I will introduce him as well. And, uh, you know, Sheikh Yasser, it's definitely been an honor and blessing. Um, you know, we got in yesterday night's session, we got so many... Um, so many uh, comments from people who just said like in the middle of this pandemic, these classes, and they specifically mentioned Surah Yasin, have really uh, given their heart ease and peace, tranquility and baraka, uh, especially during these difficult times, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you all will stay connected to Sheikh Yasser through the, these prophetic living pages where he'll have his live streams and classes and you know flyers of his programs that you all should stay connected to inshallah by following prophetic living. So Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Yasser. Sorry for the delay. We'll get started, inshallah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. The, the, any, any barakah that is uh, present in these glasses, any, any khair, any goodness that has come is purely from the grace and the blessing of Allah and the grace and the blessing of his beloved messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran is nur. The Quran is light. The Quran is healing. The Quran is... Uh, a source of clarity the quran is a source of guidance and uh, when we turn to the quran we have made the quran accessible and we have facilitated it for you to recite it and uh, the only way to unlock the bounties of the quran and the beauties of the quran is by reciting the quran with a heart that is present and uh, doesn't require uh, you know a sheikh or a teacher no, it requires that a person desires, sits down, opens up the book of Allah, purifies their heart, and reads and recites. And Allah will gift, gift by his beautiful name, by his blessed name, Bismillah. Allah opens and unlocks realities for all of us. So may Allah help us to always be amongst those who recite the Qur'an and who gain the blessings of the Qur'an. Inshallah, we continue. Uh, and today is our last recitation of Surah Yasin, and may this be, you know, just a, you know, a, a pause until, inshallah, we find many, many more beautiful opportunities to gather fil khair. May Allah always bring us together in, in beauty and goodness, in praising Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if everyone, inshallah, opens up their mushaf and humbles their heart and let's purify our intention that we ask Allah Surat Yaseen to be an intercessor for us on the day of judgment that Allah facilitates our, our needs through this beautiful surah Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen A'udhu billahi s-sami'i al-alimi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Yaseen wal-Qur'an al-Hakim إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون 
وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملت أيديهم أفلا يشكرون 
سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار وإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون 
ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم وبه نستعين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us this recitation of Surah Yaseen and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us the bounties of Surah Yaseen and that he facilitates <coughs> our affairs through this abundant surah, Surah Yaseen. May the heart of the Qur'an be embedded in our hearts and may be the heart and the soul of our realities and may facilitate through it so much goodness and so much khair. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> allow that we see <coughs> by the blessings of this recitation that all of our collective affairs are fulfilled. Those of us who've come to this surah seeking that Allah lifts um, worries and burdens, emotional, psychological, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts depression and worry and sadness and loneliness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us righteous spouses and beautiful righteous children, <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us gainful employment and rizqan halal and tayyib, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects our children and our and our grandchildren and our entire families, our, our siblings, our parents, our grandparents, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts this burden from upon us. May all of the do- ad'iyah and the hajat, the needs that we came to the surah with, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessings of the surah remove these affairs and lift them and bless us and facilitate for us whatever it is that we we need, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility and, and we have a good opinion of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us and gift us that which we ask him. And if he does not give us exactly what we ask him for, then he will give us that which is far better because Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim and Allah is the most generous and he is the most kind. And we trust in Allah's knowledge and we trust in Allah's wisdom because he is Al-Alim, Al-Hakim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So inshallah, let us um, <clears throat> reflect briefly on the last remaining verses of Surah Yasin. If you recall from yesterday, we ended off at, at verse number 73 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving us a sign of the cattle 
and the nature of the cattle and how our relationships with the cattle look and what we expect from cattle. And if cattle don't act accordingly, what we do to them and, and et cetera. So that is a type of number, a blessing from, it's a sign of two kinds. It's a, it's a sign of the blessings of Allah that he has bestowed upon us, that we have these realities that we can ride and eat, etc. But on the same token, it's an ayah. It's a sign that indicates that Allah says, you see your relationship with the cattle. So what about my relationship with you? Right. And that's, you know, what we reflected upon yesterday. <clears throat> so then moving forward, 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aliha." You know, they still, still, after all of these, all of these signs, everything that we've indicated, they have taken other gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping to be helped by them. And this is the delusion, brothers and sisters, that the human being can readily fall into, assuming that they would suspend belief, suspend rationale, suspend that which is objectively the truth, to then rely on that which their subjectivity or the deluded states rely on, you know, because, well, I, I'm just going to kind of gamble here and just go with this, you know. And in their context, it was their idols and whatever other types of false deities they followed. And subhanAllah, but we fast forward to today, there are false deities that we mindlessly and at times, times senselessly put our trust in, hoping that, in, you know what, well, let me just put my, my eggs in this basket and I'm going to have, you know, all of my quote unquote needs fulfilled. So if it's in this political space or in that social space or in this reality or in this job, and you know, although it's objectively not the best thing to do, but I do it because I'm just kind of hoping. And that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, don't leave these realities up to chance. No, you take your Lord as one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here they're saying, you know, they take these aliha, you know, hoping that, you know, they're going to be successful through them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse 75, لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون They cannot help the, they cannot help them, even though they serve the idols as dedicated guards. You know, these, these, these uh, idols that, that are worshipped, you know, no matter how much you want them to help you, they're just not, they can't help you, even though you serve them hand and foot. And this was the deluded state and the wayward ways of those people that they 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 turned away from the signs of Allah, they suspended their minds and their their rational faculties and their abilities to observe and to analyze. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them the signs time and time again. Allah sends the messengers with the truth, with the bayan, which with the clear, unadulterated, clarified Quran or revelation, and what happens? Follow of whims. And then they what well, they not only follow, they serve that entity or they serve that reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even with that, La yastati'una nasrahum. No one can bring you victory. In wa You bring victory to Allah. Allah brings you victory. That's the source of success, the source of victory, the source of relief, the source of upliftment is only in the extent to which we glorify. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we bring victory to Allah. How? By following the Quran, by observing and analyzing and understanding the signs of Allah and internalizing them and then following in the way of the Quran and our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah help us to take the Quran and the Sunnah as our path in this life. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Through our teachers and our scholars, ya rabbil alameen. <clears throat> so Allah says in verse 76, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ now there's a shift in the discourse. It's going back to whom? The prophets and the messenger, in this case, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And we have this type of tatib, this type of softening and bringing comfort to the heart of the Prophet Wasallam on a number of occasions. In the beginning of the surah, right? When he was talking to the Prophet Wasallam in the middle of the surah, speaking in reference to the messengers. And then here in the end of the surah. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us back and forth between the different discourses, where things are to be directed. So here he's telling the Prophet Sallallahu and of course, bi idhnillahi ta'ala, by extension us, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ You know, don't be saddened. Don't let their words cause you grief or sadden you. You know, people are going to say things. People are going to run their mouth. People are going to make all sorts of false claims. People are going to belie you. People are going to reject you. People are going to attack you. People are going to mock you and insult you. Because, and why is it so 
you know, uh, beautiful and seamless that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this here. Because, you know, he, sh- he you know, imagine the Prophet Sallallahu you know, imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, he's sitting down, he's listening to revelation, he's listening to Allah. And Allah is showing him all these realities of what happened to those who have come in the past, who have rejected, who were arrogant, who were deluded, who were in this, you know, very gr- grievous uh, fashion in their disposition. And then look what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does with them and how he and how he negotiates that particular reality. So it's it's almost like a matter of fact don't be saddened by what they're saying. You know, don't be saddened. Look, you I'm look what I'm showing you about them. Don't be saddened. You know, and that's and that's that's what happens when you embed yourself in the Quranic discourse. You know, and you read it within the contexts of what Allah is speaking and how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala what Allah is saying and how he's speaking to us and to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi we know certainly that which they conceal and that which they reveal. You know, there are people, there are there are those who, who act in such arrogant and prideful manners in this world. And they think that they can get away with murder, as is said. But Allah is saying, don't worry. I know exactly what's in their hearts and their minds. I know exactly what they're feeling. I know, you know, all this false pride that they're presenting, that they're projecting, I know the reality of it. Meaning don't be, don't be so taken by what people project. There's a lot of, you know, الكلاب, like dogs, they will bark a lot. Right? Not to call anyone dogs, but you understand the, 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 the imagery here, the metaphor, that there, there are those who are going to bark and be loud and obnoxious, right? Don't worry about them. I know, I know what their hearts conceal, you know, brothers and sisters, I was saying the other day, there's a lot of people who, who maybe, you know, you have, we may have some of these people in our home, may Allah protect us, and we have some of them in our family, some of them in our community, they are the loudest, the most obnoxious, the most aggressive, the most belligerent, they, they can be bullies, right, but very often they are the ones with the deepest pathologies of insecurity, they have inferiority complexes, they're trying to, you know, compensate for something, and, and, and those are masakeen, you know, those are people who are lost in their ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be a community that, 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 that tempers people like that and puts them, you know, in a place of hidayah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, you know, truly be ones of, for each other who give nasiha, who give advice. And who, if we see abuse, brothers and sisters, we cannot be quiet in front of the face of abuse, especially if we know that a brother or sister um, are having these types of issues or problems and someone's being abused, a child's being abused, a, a spouse is being abused. You know, if you know about this and you're a close family friend or you're a, uh, a relative, you know, and, and, and you just fear, okay, I don't want to really get involved. No, especially when abuse is there, you know, we have to step in and we have to absolve, resolve those matters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be um, proactive in that regard. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 7, he said, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطُفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُّبِينٌ You know, this is such a powerful ayah, brothers and sisters. Doesn't the person see that we created you from an insignificant sperm drop? You know, and we spoke, I gave the example the other day of the, the scholar who, the person, you know, is acting all heartedly. And then the scholar who said to him, he said, don't you know who I am? And the scholar said, yeah, I know exactly who you are. You know, you're originally a sperm drop. And then the end of you is a rotting carcass. And in between, you're just a carrier of feces, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, you know, insan anna khalaqnahu min nutufatin, That we created you from, from an insignificant sperm droplet. Okay, that is, the, that is where the human being comes from, okay? فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ But then what happens? SubhanAllah, the human being comes out, you know, barely existent, barely existent. But SubhanAllah, you see it even with children. A sense of entitlement, khasim, you know, start to to challenge and to argue and to buck, you know, <laughs> act as if you know I have I have rights here and I am entitled and I am this and I am that, you know, so so entitled, subhanallah. And that's the that's a part of the delusional quality of the human being, brothers and sisters. We if if the origin of our existence, okay, is that we are jaiz al wujud, that we are. You know, uh, uh, we are possibly existent, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have very well made it that none of us existed. And the world would be, you know, the same, perhaps even better, (laughs) you know. But the point is that we get so deluded in the sense of self, you know, Anna, what I, 
you know, well, you, I didn't even need to exist, but how, how have I become so inherently entitled and emboldened to now challenge and to aggress and to speak with such, you know, fervor and to be so cavalier? So Allah, is, it's a beautiful statement from the Khaliq. This is Allah, this is Allah talking to us. Didn't you, don't you see that I created you from a sperm droplet? And now you're so, mashallah alik. You know, as they, the Arabs would say, Asadun alayya wa fil hurubi na'amatun. You know, you're a lion with me, but when you're on the battlefield, you're a little, you know, <laughs> you're a little bird. You know, no, we have to we have to be very careful, brothers and sisters. You know, the servants of Ar Rahman, the ones who are aware of Allah, they walk gently on this earth. May Allah help us to be amongst them. Verse 78. And they argue with us, forgetting we created, you know, they, 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 they now see this is the chasim part. They're, they're going to start arguing with us. You know, they're they going to say to us what? Who will give life to the decayed bones? You know, see now they're, they're going to they're going to strike an example for us and try to tell us. And, and this this person who's speaking in this way, in this deluded fashion, they forgot that we are the ones who created them. And they will say, Who is going to give life from these decayed bones? Ramim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very matter-of-factly, The one who is going to revive is the one who produced them in the first place. It's not that hard. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us and Allah will take us, and Allah will bring us back, and Allah will take us, and Allah will bring us back, and Allah will take us on, as He wills and as He sees its jalla fi ula, for He has perfect knowledge of every created being. And this, this is the veil, the veil, the end of this verse. Wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. Alim is an indication of Allah's, you know, categorical knowledge of over every nuanced reality in the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we, we, spe- we see scientists today trying, you know, dissecting and looking and analyzing and studying the DNA and studying all sorts of aspects of, of the human condition physiologically, biologically, and so on, just to try to understand how to perhaps regenerate some cells or to do this or to do that, to utilize plasma for this and that and whatnot. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kulli khalqin alim. Allah brought this existence and he knows every detail of this existence so it's you know the the the, the see the the person who who rejects allah and is deluded and is arrogant the things that are so simple they think they're you know they think they got it you know they th- they think they got the cat from its from its tail as they say i got it you know <laughs> there's no nothing nothing to be seen here the one who's going to bring it in is the one who created it in the first place. Fatir al-Sabawati wal Arab. Al-Fatir, the name Allah of Allah, Al-Fatir, is the one who brings something that never was before, and that is Fatir al-Sabawati wal Arab. Alladhi, verse 80, Alladhi ja'ala lakum min al-shajar al-akhdari nara. And this is subhanallah, such a powerful verse in terms of its indication. He is the one who gives you fire from green trees. And behold, you kindle fire from them. Now, what is the power of this ayah? Where is the sign, the subtlety of this ayah? You know, we spoke about trees earlier, which was the palm tree. And the palm tree was an indication of Jannah. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about green trees that you and I set fire to. And what happens? They give us fire. Now, this is on the one end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us, we look at these trees, we can you know, break them apart and we can make a fire to warm ourselves, to cook, to, to boil water, etc. But on the other end, it's a very powerful indication of something. It's, there's a spiritual reality here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I have given you that which is pure and good. Okay? I have given you that which is pure and good. And when you, when you treat it a certain way, what ends up happening? You yourself 
thrust yourself and create the fire that ultimately becomes your abode. You see the you see the powerful imagery here. Is that on the one? See, so see this. In Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Tu qidun." You bring fire to it, so then we become that reality. We become that reality, and that's an indication of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The only reason there are those who are thrust into Jahannam is because they burn themselves. Nothing else. الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا. So here's something. So that you know here you and i may allah protect us are we we ha- we are truly beings destined towards jannah you know we have such serious beautiful potential to jannah but then if those people choose if people choose to take you know deluded pathways di- misguidance rejection as their path then what happens they take something so beautiful and they burn it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from ever being in that disposition may the end of our fire be literally these twigs and trees that we break so that we can just have a nice warm fire nothing more may our relationship with fire truly end after this dunya ya rabbil alamin may we never experience any of the pains that bring about fire in the afterlife which is which could is very well the fire that people light because of their behaviors in this dunya, may Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَىٰ وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ Can the one who created the heavens and the earth not easily resurrect these deniers? Yes, he can, certainly, بَلَىٰ You know, this is a matter of fact, for, for he is the master creator all-knowing. And so this is this is to now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the almost in the crescendo is making this emphatic, emphatic affirmation and he's manifesting himself and he's saying, hey, 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 everyone. Isn't the one who created the heavens and the earth certainly capable of creating that which is similar to it? Obviously, bella, matter of factly, yes, categorically. Allah is the one who creates absolutely. He's the master creator. He's not any, he's not, he's not any type of creator. He's the khalaq, the creator of creators, if you will. Al-Alim, the all-knowing. So Allah has profound creative capacity and his knowledge encompasses all realities, that which we can you know, potentially fathom of in that which we can certainly not fathom of. Fi ilm illa. May Allah allow us to be humbled by His magnificence. And Ya Allah, we tell, we 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 say to you in this moment, Ya Allah, that these verses, Wallahi, they induce humility within us. Ya Allah, and help us to be humbled by Your Majesty and these signs that You have sent us, that You have preserved for us to read and to analyze. Inna ma amruhu ida arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. That this is the affair of Allah. The affair of Allah, Amruhu, His command is one. If He wants something, then He says, Be, and it is. And this, brothers and sisters, it should induce so much in our hearts when we read this that, that the yani, innama amruhu, the affair of Allah, what is, you know, what is, what is the affair of Allah? What is the reality? If Allah wants something, if Allah wants something, meaning the desire of Allah it attaches to something, then all Allah says is kun. He has that which is between the kaf and the noon. Kun fayakun. And it is. So on the one end, yes, divine majesty, power that those those who are arrogant on this earth and those who act in the most vile and oppressive and evil of ways, then the power of Kun will be upon them and they will be rendered nothingness. But then also for the Mu'mineen, Kun Fayakun is a reality that brings us confidence and relief, and that you and I may be coming to this space feeling that we have issues and problems and challenges that are so impossibly, you know, uh, you know, just, just difficult and complicated. And that's, yes, because we're humble beings and we're masakin and we barely know anything. But we're dealing with the one 
whose affair is, be and it is. Be, that's it, be, and it is. It's the shortest, you know, I mean, imagine the entire creative capacity of Allah is, in, is captured in this kun. Be, that's it. Be. That's all Allah needs to say. And so, brothers and sisters, when you're turning to Allah, turn with mana, with, with manifest humility to Allah. Say, Ya Allah, I turn to you because you have the power of kun. And so, Ya Allah, exact that beautiful capacity upon me by lifting this burden, lifting this worry, lifting this sadness. Do you see why the secret of Yaseen in terms of it, you know, uplifting and removing and fulfilling. Do you see why it's in Yasin? It's in these two letters, kun. So yes, tuqra'u li qada'il hawa'ij. It's read to fulfill needs because of kun. <laughs> because of kun, brothers and sisters. It's all about kun. Allah, kun fayakun. So you, you have anything. You go to the one who possesses kun. You know, you're, and, and then also those who are so far astray, Allah has the power of kun to bring them right back to the path. You may have a loved one who's far off the path, someone who has not yet embraced the sacred tradition, those who may have walked away for a bit. Turn to the one who has the power of kun, and, and he will make that reality be if he wills. إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا You see arada, the precondition is what Allah wills it, Allah wants it, Allah desires it. So He has the power of kun. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to internalize this powerful capacity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to appreciate this powerful capacity. May we be humbled by this capacity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we now understand the secret of Surah Yaseen is in this kun, this kun right here. So brothers and sisters, you know, as now we're exiting the surah, I want us to, 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 harner, to, to harness and to take in this beauty into our hearts and to then notice that the ta'alluq, the attachment that we need to have is the one who, who has irada, Allah, because it's his irada that begets kun. It's Allah's will that begets be. You notice that. So what do I have to do? I have to go to the one الَّذِي يُرِيدُ وَهُوَ اللَّهِ And I have to go to the one الَّذِي يُرِيدُ وَهُوَ اللَّهِ وَأَقُلْ لِلَّهِ مَاذَا تُرِيدُ Ya Allah, what do you then want of me? Because I clearly now see that you have the power of be. So then I have to go to the source of that power and say, what do you want from me? So that you can exact that reality of kun upon me and my loved ones and my realities, my needs. In Tansurullah, if you bring victory to Allah, Allah will bring victory to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to turn to Allah in this beautiful humility. And may we be always in awe, in reverent awe of Allah's magnificence. And lastly, before we inshallah, alhamdulillah, we have Sheikh Yahya with us now, and he's going to, you know, uh, beautifully wrap up the ma'ani that we are sharing, inshallah. This is the last verse. فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ Malakutu kulli shay wa turja'un. So glory be to Allah. And this is this is the disposition of the believer. The disposition of the believer is one now of glory. Subhana. Subhana means to 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 elevate Allah in our hearts, in our minds, to realms that we can't even fathom. But we say subhanak. Glory be to you, Tanazahta an kulli naqsin ya Allah. You are above any faults or or, 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 you know, deficiencies. Jalla fi ulak. Subhana. Fa subhana alladhi bi yadihi. In whose hand is the malakut. He has dominance and authority over all realities. Malakutu kulli shay. Wa ilayhi turja'oon. And the reality is. Istirja inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. From Allah we come and to Allah we will return. Inna lillahi we belong to Allah. And we will certainly return to him. And it's so befitting that subhanAllah and so beautiful that the end of this verse is rujua. Rujua. It's 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 fasubahana, it's dhikr, glorifying Allah and the disposition of the one who is in awe of Allahi Yurid, Allahi Huwallah, is the one who says, Subhanak, Subhanak, 
جل في علاك لا إله إلا أنت الله أكبر لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل This is the disposition of the mu'min whose heart is alive who processes the words of Surah Yasin and the, the sacred revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who says Subhanallah I am in awe ya Allah I, I have been so absent-minded I have been so thoughtless Subhanak Subhanak Inna lillah I know I'm coming back to you soon, Ya Allah. In this time that I have in the dunya, lutfak, sitru al lutf. I need your lutf. I need your subtle grace upon me. I need your sitr. I need your, your beautiful covering to protect me, facilitate my affairs because clearly everything is in the power of kun, which is possessed by you. And I know I'm coming back to you. So, Ya Allah, protect me until that moment. And then beyond that point, I ask you for your beautiful rahmah and your grace that will shower upon us all, that will grant us bi-idhnillahi ta'ala beautiful stations in the afterlife. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Inshallah, I want to now transition to our dear Sheikh Yahya to hear some of his reflections and his thoughts, and then um, perhaps in the end, we'll make some dua for all of us as we're concluding, inshallah. And perhaps, inshallah, if Sheikh Yahya can also make dua for us, we would love to hear him make his beautiful dua for us. Barakallahu feekum. And may Allah accept our recitation of Surah Yasin in all these days. And may these words that we reflected upon from this humble being, which is a miskeen, may it be just, you know, some basic indicators of how we can process these ayat. But these ayat are endless. And my words in, 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 in trying to elucidate some of its meanings are nothing but a mere, you know, humble effort. And I hope and pray Allah that inshallah that Allah yujri ala qulubina wa ala al sinatina al khair that Allah always brings on our hearts and our tongues that which is the best and most pleasing to Him. Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu fiikum wa jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Yahya. I mean, sorry, Sheikh Yasser. We'll have Sheikh Yasser join us inshallah um, uh, after Sheikh Yahya's talk. And uh, I just want to introduce Sheikh Yahya, who has been helping us with this class as well, mashallah. Um, Sheikh Yahya, hold on, let me, okay, there we go. Sheikh Yahya Rodas was born in Kansas City, Missouri at the age of 19. He embraced Islam in Santa Clara, California. He began, uh, sorry, he began his study of Islam with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and visiting Mauritanian scholars such as Sheikh Khatri, Wold Baiba and Sheikh Abdullah Wold Ahmedna. In 1998, Sheikh Yahya traveled to Mauritania to pursue a full time course of study where he learned from some of Mauritania's greatest scholars, including the distinguished Murabat al Hajj. He also spent an interim period in Damascus, Syria, where he received formal education in the Arabic language, grammar, and Quranic recitation. In 2000, Sheikh Yahya moved to Tarim, Yemen to continue his studies at the prestigious Learning Institute. Darul Mustafa. There he spent his formative years studying with the renowned scholars Habib Omar um, and along with other local scholars. He studied various sciences including tafsir, hadith, theology, jurisprudence, legal theory, the prophetic bi biography, and Arabic poetry. And I also want to say uh, to both of the teachers that we've been getting some amazing comments from everyone about this class. Someone just said, Assalamu alaikum from Qatar. I simply have a humble comment. I want to thank everyone present, Mother Tariq and the CM team, and a special thank you to Sheikh Yasser Fahmi and Sheikh Yahya for not only helping us cultivate a special relationship with Surat Yasin, but also helping us redefine our relationship with the Quran. Mashallah, I'm truly going to miss these sessions. They were the catalyst to my worship every night of these last 10 nights. May Allah bless and reward you all. Eid Mubarak. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Sheikh Yahya, inshallah, for some closing remarks. Uh, and then we'll go back to Sheikh, Yahya, uh, Sheikh Yasser after that. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Waalaikum salam. Great to see you. Great to see you. Very good to see you on this blessed last day of this blessed month. Mashallah. Tabarakallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. I will keep my comments brief. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Um, I just want us to all appreciate the jewels of wisdom that we have just heard and have been hearing from Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. May Allah Ta'ala bless him and increase him. And SubhanAllah, 
the benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to the heart on from the tongues and the hearts of, of your brothers is oftentimes extremely great. And mashallah tabarakallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, inspired our dear brother with that meaning that we all just heard. And I want us to just really pause and really understand what it is that we just heard and the beautiful insight of pointing to how the blessed surah of Yasin and why it's so important in terms of taking care of our needs. And when you recite it for a particular reason, why that if you recite it with Iman and in a way that's pleasing to Allah Ta'ala, believing in Him, and you go throughout the surah on all of the different themes that are mentioned that focus upon Allah, prophethood, the afterlife, all the stories that we have. And then, kun fayakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to something, be, and it is. If we can take that meaning into our lives, we can also understand why Yasin is also the heart of the Quran, because the essence of the Quran ultimately is about you and I drawing near to our Lord. Sirat Qurba. This whole affair is about proximity to Allah, about coming to know Allah. And the one who says to something, kun fiyakun, be and it is, can transform our low base state into an angelic purified state whereby that we can come to know him. And I refuse to accept a dumbed down discourse that reminds me more of a watered down Christianity of something I left and came to this deen. And I absolutely believe that everybody listening, everybody on the face of this earth has in them the sirra nafkha, the secret of Allah Ta'ala blowing the spirit into them. I breathed into him of my spirit, Yadafat al Tashrif, honoring the ruh, because the ruh is the alat al Muhabbah. It is the way in which that Allah Ta'ala has endowed us with the ability to love him. Just as the qalb is the alat al Ma'rifah, the heart is how we know him and how we can then, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that realize his greatness. And alhamdulillah, the one who says to something, be and it is, can transform any one of us in any moment. And so the secret of transformation. And yes, Allah Ta'ala can bring something from non-existence into existence. Allah Ta'ala can change something in his creation how he wants. The greatest transformation that takes place is the transformation of the heart of one of the children of Adam, a male or a female child of Adam, the transformation that takes place at the level of their heart is the greatest transformation of all. And when we recite this verse, and we should recite it this chapter often, and we specifically specifically recite this verse in this chapter, we should realize that in reading his words, nothing transforms us more like his words. And the transformation is taking place, whether we realize it or not, but the more that we are aware of that reality, and the more that we believe in that reality, kun kun, the more that you and I will become transformed. And then the more that the world in which we live will be put into proper perspective. And the odia who we should follow, interact with this world very differently. And just think about the beauty, and I'm just essentially repeating everything that our dear Sheikh Yasser just said, just so that we can graze in these meanings a little bit longer, because they're so beautiful, and they're so pleasant, and that they're so sweet. So glory be to the one whose hands is the authority over all things, power over all things, and to whom alone you will all be returned. Kun fayakun, the secret of transformation, the secret of things coming from non-existence into existence. And then look at that perspective of Iman. Everything 
But a quote here is a Sifu Mubarak indicate the dominion of everything. He has authority over everything. Nothing escapes him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing escapes his knowledge and nothing escapes his power. He is fully in control, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Think about how that impacts you as a believer when you go out into the world and you see things like that. You experience the world like that. You experience tribulations like that. Think about how different you will be. And then ultimately we're reminded, what is this whole affair about? It's return. We're all returning to Allah. And, but we want to return to Allah transformed. We want to return to Allah in a state so that we are ready then to receive those gifts of paradise that we spoke about before. And that which no eye has hear, heard, no, no, that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and that which has not even come to the heart of a human being. May Allah Ta'ala prepare us for that blessed moment when we return to Him. And may we all be from those who hear the divine address. Salamun qawlin min Rabbin Rahim. And may Allah Ta'ala bless us with a gaze upon His noble countenance perpetually in the hereafter. Ya Arhamar Rahimin. The scholars who before us took this surah very seriously and they memorized it and they would recite it often. And I've actually witnessed this firsthand in spending time with people who would recite this surah several times a day at different times of the day, not just once in the morning or once in the evening. They would recite it several times during the day. Uh, one of the great scholars of Hadramaut, Imam Abdullah bin Arid Haddad, used to recite Surah Yasin and all four Sunnah Raka'ahs of the Luhar prayer on a daily basis. So he would recite it at least four times. And all of this is to teach us that we need to make the Quran central to our lives. And we do that by exalting it and by loving it. Have ta'lim in your heart for the Book of Allah. These are the words of Allah. This is His eternal speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala has given us these blessed words to recite, to bring us near to Him. And no matter how much we know how great the Quran is, we'll never truly know the secrets of reciting His words, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what happens internally to the human being. And we are in a state of munajah. We are in a state of intimate conversation with our Lord when we're reciting His book. And this is why we should approach it with utmost humility. And that when there are threats and warnings in the Quran, nakhda, we're humble before Allah. We don't wonder like, oh, wait, why is Allah speaking about punishing people who came? No, humility. This is the maqam of rububiya. Allah is the rabb. And he's jalali. There's, he has jalali attributes. He has majestic attributes. But if you approach those majestic attributes with humility and with fear of him because he deserves to be feared, and that you train yourself eternally how to be, so to make sure that you don't fall into that same mistake. Oof. That that fear that you have of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what comes after that is deep love of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the doors for you to experience his lutf and his generosity and subhanahu wa ta'ala his gentleness and his karam and his generosity to Padra Kuwait Ada. And this is how the people before us viewed this. So we need to bring the Quran into our lives. And especially we need to bring the surah into our lives. And this is one of the things that, that really I think we need to think about in this time. We don't place enough focus on the Quran. Just as we don't place enough focus upon our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, is that we have to bring the Quran into our lives and we have to bring an understanding of the Prophet Sallallahu in our lives. And just to remind everybody what we already know, the Prophet is a walking Quran. So when you bring the Prophet Sallallahu into your lives, you're bringing the greatest tafsir of the Quran that you learn by studying his sirah and his life story Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you know how that the best of creation, how he put the Qur'an into practice to then be inspired 
for you to put the Quran into practice because this whole affair ultimately is coming about coming to know our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we must do this despite our preoccupations, despite how busy we are, that teachers that I know that were very busy would still do a khatam once a week of Allah Ta'ala's book. They would make sure that they took the time. The great scholars who came before us, Imam Shafi, would do 60 khatams of the Quran in Ramadan. I mean, if you look at that time-wise, someone might wonder how that could even be the case. Despite all of his knowledge, despite all of his social commitments and everything he was doing for people in society, they made the Quran central to their lives. The blessed place that I study in Tarim, common folk would do a khatam once a week and they had something arranged where they would recite that one fourteenth of the Quran in the morning, one fourteenth in the evening. So they do a one seventh of the Quran every day of the week and do a khatam. And these are common folk that are working during the day. These are what our societies, this is how they were and this as a result what they produced. We absolutely have to bring the Quran back into our lives and we should learn how to recite it. We should dedicate ourselves to a study of the Arabic language and at least get a work, working vocabulary of the, of the more oft-repeated words in Allah Ta'ala's book. And we can, in the meantime, read uh, good translations of the meanings like the clear Quran, Dr. Mustafa Al-Khattab, or the Professor Abdul Halim translation, so that we can attach to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's book and bring it into our lives and that when we bring this into our lives and we make it central to our approach to this deen, Allah Taala takes care of all of our affairs and everything happens organically and then naturally because this is really what we need to do. We just simply need to be in the way that Allah Taala wants us to be and everything that is supposed to happen will happen as a result. Alhamdulillah, I'm very excited to see more emphasis on Allah's book, especially that uh, that during the month of Ramadan, and inshallah, this is something that will increase. And barakallahu um, fikum. I apologize for uh, jumping in here. Uh, I would have much rather heard uh, final words from from Sheikh Yasser. But may Allah Taala uh, bless all of you and all of you who are listening, and all of you who took part in making this happen. Inshallah, may the blessings in it be immense, and may inshallah Taala the reward of those blessings multiply every day of our lives as we're here in this world in the barzakh and then yom al and then eternally in paradise inshallah ta'ala um, there are certain gatherings that take place in this world they're so blessed that even in paradise the reward that they receive from those gatherings continues to increase so they're already in paradise and they're already receiving the blessing of a gathering that took place in this world and from the blessing of the, some of those gatherings, those experiences in paradise continue to increase as a result of the time that they spent uh, in the world. May Allah Ta'ala uh, make this time that you spent primarily with Sheikh Yasser uh, of that time and get up gatherings of that nature. Bi idni la ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Yahya. We, we, we tr we're truly honored to have you, and uh, not just for this program, for but other other programs since the middle of March, since you know this pandemic started to spread. Sheikh Yahya has been with us for so many different programs. Jazakumullah khair, and uh, please follow Al Maqasid, and also follow Sheikh Yahya on social media so you stay up to date on his programs, his uh, his organization's programs, their seminary their classes and their live streams, al Maqasid, inshallah. Um, Sheikh Yahya is going, I mean, sorry, Sheikh, I always get confused. There's two, two names with a Y, so I just keep mixing them up. But Sheikh Yasser uh, is uh, going to close off the session, inshallah, um, with some words and a dua. Um, and in general, this will be a dua to, to uh, you know, for the closing of Ramadan. This is our final session, final program that we're doing at all during the month of Ramadan. You know, we've had a lot of them, alhamdulillah, but this is the final session of the final program of the final day, of the final hours of Ramadan, inshallah. So um, we're, we're blessed to have Sheikh Yasser. And once he's done, inshallah, I will have some closing announcements about some upcoming, um, uh, upcoming programs and other things, inshallah. So stay tuned afterwards for that as well. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah <laughs> walhamdulillah. Salatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Uh, first, we say, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat. 
we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that only by his blessings do righteous uh, realities and righteous affairs come into completion. And so alhamdulillah, you know, we, we say alhamdulillah الصالحات, from the completion of the month of Ramadan, from the completion of this gathering of Surah Yaseen. And we, um, we make a special dua for our dear Sheikh Yahya and all of our teachers and our brothers and sisters um, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to uh, glean some um, beautiful gems from the sacred tradition. You know, Sheikh Yahya uh, spoke about his teachers and in our teachers, th these are special people, alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And, and you know, لولاهم, if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choosing them to bring them into our lives, to show us some windows of how um, to, to engage the sacred tradition, we would be lost. We would be children, you know, sitting on the side of the yard, not knowing what to do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us teachers, you know, Sheikh Ahmad Taha Rayyan, my Sheikh from Egypt, and, and, and all the beautiful mashayikh of Sheikh Yahya that were mentioned. These are um, our guiding lights, alhamdulillah. And they all take from who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and so our connection to these sacred words and sacred meanings comes from a beautiful, uh, unbroken chain of transmission back to the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet Muhammad took from the angel Jibreel who took from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this, this, you know, I want us to embed our hearts and our minds and our souls in this, um, you know, uh, this, this, this cosmic, if you will, celestial connection that exists. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this reality to continue to be with us. And may the Quran <clears throat> continue to heal our hearts. And may the Quran continue to be a source of guidance and clarity and a source of illumination and enlightenment and increase in our lives. May we, if we've tasted some of the beauty of the Quran in this month by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Quran does not need anything really. The Quran is the Quran by Allah and through Allah. <laughs> we are, we're mutatafireen, we're just kind of there, you know, doing whatever it is we do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran is there by him and through him all the time. All we need to do is say bismillah. That is the that is the sir, the opening of the book of the Allah to our hearts and minds is Bismillah. So as Sheikh Yahya was indicating, brothers and sisters, maintain your connection with the book of Allah, with these beautiful sacred chapters and the rest of it, because it is all khayr, it is all beautiful, beautiful, and it's all bountiful, alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our Ramadan to accept our time together as ibadah. May every time that we spent in the morning and in the evening be a form of ibadah, worship, and that Allah accepts it and he is pleased with us. And He and we thank him, we thank him for, for Surah Yaseen. And we thank him for the Quran and we thank him for Ramadan and we thank him for worship in the spirit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that we are grateful servants and also from the bab from the haythiyya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says well, in shakartum la azidannakum. if you are thankful I will increase you so if any of us you know really feel a sense of gratitude uh, for, for the beauty of this Quran then say alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah praise Allah and thank him and Allah will continue to open up pathways towards him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in all of our lives the pathways towards him to grant us righteous teachers and righteous companions and and to grant us an intimate connection to Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make the Quran the guiding light in our lives Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and protect all of our brothers and sisters al-qa'imin those who have worked tirelessly um, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes to serve um, this deen our brothers and sisters in all of the platforms, mashallah, we don't want to designate one over the other. All the platform have served, alhamdulillah. And in this platform, it has been celebrate mercy. Our dear brother Tariq, our dear sister Hasna, our dear brother Subhan, our dear sister Afifa, our dear sister Samar, and the recent additions of dear dear sister Sara, Rebecca, Inaya, and 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 Liza. These are mashallah um, people who Allah subhanahu wa taala chose to carry a beautiful responsibility and amana, and that is to facilitate for us opportunities to gather and to celebrate Allah and to celebrate his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is all a celebration of rahmah, the mercy of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah chooses people that they are khuddam, they are servants of this reality. You know, you'll never see them, subhanAllah, they serve this reality. And the Prophet and, and the, the, our teachers tell us, you know, kun aliman aw muta'alliman aw khadiman lahuma. Be either a, a, a scholar, a person of knowledge, 
or a student of knowledge or someone who serves the scholars and the students. And alhamdulillah, those who are, or who are, I mentioned their names, they are both, there are two categories. They are the students as well as the servants, mashallah. So they have with min thalath. You know, they came, they took two of three, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, some of them will be all three, bi ta'ala. May we all be people of knowledge and students of knowledge and servants and khuddam to this sacred ilm, this sacred tradition. And may this religion truly be the, 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 the most beautiful badge of honor that we carry in our lives. May Allah bless and protect our loved ones, our family members. May Allah keep us you know, firm on, our, on this path. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik wa thabbit qulubana ala ta'atik. Ya Allah, keep our, you, you are the one who alters the states of the hearts. Keep our hearts steadfast upon this deen and steadfast upon this ta'a. And Ya Allah, do not th- allow this to be akhir ahdina bi Ramadan wa bil Quran. Do not allow this moment, Ya Allah, to be the last of our connection to Ramadan and with the Quran and with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, make sure that tomorrow, tonight is still a sacred night. You know, it's Laylatul <laughs> Jaza. Tonight is when the rewards, you know, the Jaza, Jaza of Ramadan, the gifts, just like tomorrow's a day of Eid, is a day of gifts. Well, spiritual gifts are gifted tonight, so be present tonight. And tomorrow's a day of Eid. And Prophet said that the ayam of Eid, ayam wa wa fikr. There are days of remembrance and, 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 and contemplation. And so ibadah is with us. Not begrudgingly, no, we take our sacred companion of worship with us everywhere because we can't leave anywhere without it, <laughs> you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and protect you all. May Allah bless Sheikh Yahya for being with us and, and gracing us with his, his beautiful words and his guidance. And may Allah soften his heart always towards the beauty of this religion. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embed in his heart and in his family's heart and in his loved ones so much khair and so much barakah and so much beauty. May the barakah descend upon him in his health and his wealth and his time and his energy and his teachers and may every word that he utters be for his for his teachers and his teachers teachers and his teachers 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 and may this what he has be descent may, may go down you know to his children and his grandchildren and his great 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 grandchildren may it be a transgenerational reality and may he be a halaqa a critical you know link in that beautiful chain and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to all be those realities. May Allah grant us, grant us tawfiq for that. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumallah khair, Sheikh Yasser. That was uh, that was beautiful, a beautiful conclusion to our program. And please do continue to follow uh, Sheikh Yasser's page at Prophetic Living and Amin to all of his dua. And uh, please pray for all of the team members that celebrate mercy that have really been working hard for these programs. So some closing announcements here for our final session, uh, inshallah, um, that uh, on YouTube, you can find all of the previous sessions from this class. So make sure you subscribe to Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel. So you have seen all of the tafsir, I mean, or all of the reflections on Surah Yasin, inshallah, um, from previous sessions. So you can do that on our YouTube channel. And please do subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any videos we post or any live streams we post. You can click on the bell to be notified of those things, alhamdulillah. Some of you, even during this session, have continued to donate to our cause. And we really do appreciate that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are now at 95% uh, towards our goal. The, the number is actually higher than this number. Right now, I think it's over 475,000. Um, we're trying to reach 500, which is the amount we raised last year. So if you've been benefiting from these programs, all of these programs cost money. They cost money. This program, previous programs, future programs, Ramadan is the time when we raise funds so that we can continue to put out these programs throughout the year. It is our main fundraising time. Um, if we don't do well in Ramadan fundraising, we can't do all of what we want to do uh, throughout the year. So uh, hopefully uh, we can have, you all can give Celebrate Mercy an Eid gift, inshallah, by helping us reach our goal. And this is the link where you can donate, celebratemercy.com slash donate. It's gonna be posted in the chat as well celebratemercy.com slash donate. And remember that sadaqah, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, extinguishes our sins. The best of sadaqah is in Ramadan. Charity does not diminish wealth. 
the believer, the believer's shade on the day of resurrection will be his charity and giving char give charity without delay for it blocks calamities, it blocks calamities. So we hope you'll remember celebrate mercy in these last hours of Ramadan. SubhanAllah, I just see it's, it's starting to, there's a light rain outside in these last hours, at least where I am in Philadelphia, it started to rain just now. So inshallah, these are signs of mercy and uh, those who do donate larger amounts, we send gifts in the mail as well, alhamdulillah. And also, this is the last day for you to take advantage of this special deal. We've been reciting you Surah Yasin. We've been reciting Quran this month. Why don't we deepen our understanding of the Quran by learning Arabic, by learning Quranic Arabic or improving our Quranic Arabic? So this deal actually expires today where you can save almost $800 on this 18 month Arabic class with live instructors, you get an app that's very helpful to memorize vocabulary. There's homework, there's books that they send you in the mail. It's very professionally done, but this is it. Like this is the last day where you can get this huge discount of almost $800. So this is the, your last chance. Make, a, make an intention, inshallah, that this through this class, through other classes, we've reconnected with the book of Allah. But let's not close it and put it away and it just collects dust for the rest of the year. This is an opportunity where our connection to the Quran can continue after Ramadan, inshallah. And this class starts in June. So it starts next month. So you have a few days to celebrate Eid, have fun, drink coffee, have dessert, get some donuts, you know, um, and all that. But then we can start again, reopening the book and re and, 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 and deepening our understanding. Some, some people, actually most people that have completed this class, even level one, level one of this class have said that after finishing level one of this Quranic Arabic class, they now understand 15 to 20% of the words in the Quran when they're praying, when they're reciting, the comprehension has improved by 15, 20%. So imagine if next Ramadan, you've already finished like a year of this class and your Ramadan bears so many more fruits. This is a, a class by Fawakih Institute. Fawakih means fruits. Inshallah. So inshallah, you all can continue learning and we can take what we've gained in Ramadan as momentum to, re to deepen our connection even further with the Quran. This is the website, fawakih.org slash cmercy. And just want to give you guys an overview of everything that's been happening over the past couple of months. Look at all these programs and campaigns that we've done helping people who have been financially impacted by the coronavirus thousands of Americans that we sent checks to. We worked with Penny Appeal on this and ICNYU, thousands of Americans who benefited from this campaign to provide coronavirus financial relief. That was very early on, two months ago. Then we did all these webinars, coronavirus crisis, the Isra and Maraj webinar that had 12,000 viewers, the peace in a pandemic webinar, 7,000 viewers. Then we held a, we took our portrait of a prophet class and took it online. I mean, this is just to show you that like we really haven't been getting much sleep as a team at Celebrate Mercy. We haven't been sleeping much. We had to double the size of our team. Sheikh Yasser mentioned their names just so we could help produce this content to benefit people during this crisis that we're in with the coronavirus. While we are all stuck at home, while the masajid are closed, we wanted to serve as a virtual masjid. We wanted to serve as a, a source of peace Inshallah. During this particular class, we had almost 400 people register and people are still registering for it because you can still get access to 22 hours, 22 hours of recordings from this class. This is a class where we completed this entire book, this book of the Shama'il. This book was finished in this class and you can still register. It's a book of 400 ahadith, 400 ahadith. This is the book right here. Uh, 400 ahadith on the narrations and stories on the Prophet Muhammad's personality uh, and his persona. What did he look like? How did he walk? How did he talk? What did he eat? How did he eat? What did he drink? How did he drink? Uh, um, how did he laugh? How did he smile? What was his sense of humor like? His humility, his modesty, his crying, his weeping, his prayer. I mean, it was, it's an amazing class. And the teachers, including Sheikh Yasser Fahmi and Sheikh Yahya Rodas, 
go through all 400 hadiths, hadith by hadith with commentary. This is an amazing class. Four, almost 400 people have signed up for it and you can still sign up and you'll get access to all the recordings for six months, 22 hours of classes. This is how you can register here um, at this website, celebratemercy.com slash portrait. And you can even get a $10 discount. And we even have scholarships available if you cannot afford it through our scholarship fund that many of you all have helped fund that scholarship, uh, those scholarships. Look, I want you to just see here what one person said about this class. I mean, I'm only gonna show you one testimonial here. Um, we have many of them. She said, I wanted to be intentional in my contacting the organization for what a difference it has made in my life. I came across Celebrate Mercy through a random ad and I thought it was random, but something made me click and find out more. I truly believe God led me to this organization. To give context, I was born Muslim, but never practiced intentionally or in true worship beyond culturally Muslim. And I resented many Muslim spaces that felt hostile towards women. At one point, I had completely abandoned the deen. I had completely abandoned the religion beyond just believing in God. I shared with a friend that was interested in Islam, this organization when I found it. And we decided to learn more about Islam from a new perspective, which is learning about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first. This current class, the Portrait of a Prophet class has been so enlightening, but also has helped me want to learn even more, learn the prayers and the Quran. May Allah reward you all. I wonder if there will be another class during Ramadan. This was before we started the Surah Yasin class or to continue into the seerah or resources that help us so we don't fall off as we started to get into the deen. Again, thank you so much for this organization that has made me want to be a part of a Muslim community and learn. Like, does it get any better than that? Does it get any better than that? Someone who said they had completely abandoned Islam. And after the class, subhanAllah, you know, she said, you know, she wants to learn more. She wants to start praying. She wants to learn Quran. She wants to be part of a Muslim community again. Um, this is the impact that these programs are having. So we want to encourage you guys to register for this class, inshallah. Get all access to 22 hours of recording and help yourself, inshallah, and your family to fall in love with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we continue doing programs, Ramadan resolutions, the global salawat day, global salawat day here. We had the Battle of Badr webinar. We had seven Friday programs of Surat al-Kaf and khutbahs. Um, we had this class, the Surah Yasin class. We had the class in the evenings on the heart of the Prophet We had a program on the 27th of Ramadan about the Prophet's life in Mecca and the first revelations. All together, look at this. We had over 300,000 views of our videos, our live streams and our recorded videos. Mashallah, 95 hours, more than 95 hours, but the, the number of video views, people who saw these videos in eight weeks since mid-March, mashallah was, uh, I mean, coming close to half a million there, coming close to half a million, subhanAllah. So um, the book that I mentioned earlier, the Shema'il book, you can also find this on our website, inshallah. Um, or if you make a $200 donation to Celebrate Mercy, this is a $40 book. Um, you can get this for free as a gift by donating $200 to Celebrate Mercy, inshallah. All we need, you know, all we need to hit our goal is about uh, 200 people to give $100, or we need 100 people to give $200, and we would hit our fundraising goal for Ramadan. I also want to show you guys something that I've never shown you before, which is one of the projects we are fundraising for, and that is a kids program. This is a kids program that we want to take online, that we want to take to schools across the world. It is a really unique program that we started in Arizona. We started it in Arizona a few years ago as a test, as an experiment, where Sheikh Abedullah Evans taught the Meccan phase of the Sirah with young kids, teenagers, middle school aged, um, kids between fourth grade and seniors in high school. We had nasheeds. We had a beautiful, uh, beautiful class, an all-day program on the uh, the Meccan phase of the Sira. Then a couple of years ago, we 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 tried to change it 
so that we added a second day. So it was a, it became a two day program where basically the school gave us at Anur Academy here in Knoxville, Tennessee, they gave us all their kids for two days, all their kids for two days. They gave them to celebrate mercy say, you guys have the kids for two days during the school day, inshallah, and uh, you all teach them and have fun with them. So we taught the Sira in such a fun way. We had arts and crafts. We had Sheikh Aisha Prime and Sheikh Abaydullah Evans there. We divided the kids into different age groups. We had nasheeds. We made learning the Sira fun for the kids, right? And then that was the Meccan phase of the Sira that they were learning. Then we added just a few months ago, we developed an entire curriculum for kids to learn the Medinan phase of the Sira. So we added slides for different age groups on teaching what happened between the Hijra of the Prophet وسلم, all the way until the final moments of the Prophet's life. We tested this program out a few months ago in Tennessee, the same school at Noor Academy with about 200 kids. This was an amazing program, alhamdulillah. Take a look at the pictures here. The arts and crafts got a lot better. We added Jeopardy games for the kids. We had different age groups. As you can see, these were pictures from, uh, that's my good friend, Safiya, mashallah. Um, we had, uh, mashallah, classes uh, and Jeopardy games. It was awesome. This is an awesome program and they had fun learning, mashallah. And take a look at this. This is a picture of an exercise that Sheikha Aisha Prime did with kids learning how did the battle of Uhud take place, right? She did a role-playing simulation where they actually reenacted in a fun way, the battle of Uhud, right? And she said, you guys on the stage are the archers. You guys are gonna shoot arrows at the army of the enemies, right? And she said, the prophet Wasallam, told you, don't forget what the prophet Wasallam, told you, which is never leave this hill. Whatever happens, don't leave this hill. Keep shooting your arrows, right? And she, she basically, they had glow sticks as their swords. They had jerseys for the different, two different armies. You had the believers and the quote unquote disbelievers, you know, and you had, instead of arrows, the kids were throwing paper wads, you know, pelting people with paper wads. And then at one point, subhanAllah, at one point, Sheikha Aisha said, uh, she took a bunch of candy and she threw it in the air. And she said, the Muslims have won, the Muslims have won, you know, and all of the archers, all of the people on the stage, on the hill, they abandoned their post. And, uh, and then she taught them a lesson. Look, you, uh, you, you forgot, you forgot what the Prophet Sallallahu told you. He said, never leave this hill, regardless of what happens. But when they saw the candy being thrown in the floor, they all got up and they ran and they thought the Muslims won and they got their candy. And then she get, they never forgot this lesson. It was an amazing way to teach the battle of Uhud. And so every time we do this program for kids, it improves and it gets better. And it's, it has much more of an impact on the kids. Alhamdulillah, this is the program we want to take online. We want to take this class, look at some of the slides we have from our Sira class. Th these are the slides for teenagers. So um, you'll see here, you know, the prophet's arrival in Quba and in Medina and, you know, beautiful pictures. I mean, th this, there's a lot of time that was put into developing the research and putting these slides together for kids, the building of the masjid in Medina, this treaty, the treaty with the Jewish tribes, you know, um, diagrams, maps, we have video clips, you know, all these sorts of things. So these are some of the projects that we want to, we want your help with. This is what we're raising money for. We're raising money so that we can know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that our kids can know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because you can't love someone that you don't know. You can't love someone that you don't know. These are the programs. If we can't raise the funds for them, we can't do them. It's as simple as that, because these things cost money. And most of the time when we take this program to Islamic schools, they can't afford to bring the program there either. Most Islamic schools are uh, on tight budgets themselves. So that's why we have to fundraise to subsidize and help decrease the costs so that schools and masajid and, pro and, and, and you could even host this kids program with a bunch of kids in a big home. You know, you could get a hundred kids into a very large home. It doesn't have to be at an Islamic school, inshallah. Of course, we, you know, we have to wait until we can host social gatherings again, but we also want to take this program online. So keep that in mind. 
And then I also want to say that if any of you guys in the future are interested in joining Celebrate Mercy's trips, we take trips to uh, Jordan, Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina. And we started this last year. Once COVID-19 passes us, inshallah, and we can start doing Umrah trips again, start doing um, you know trips to Jerusalem, once it's safe again for us to travel, you can join these trips. You can join teachers like Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, you know, you can join teachers like Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, Sheikh Aisha Prime. You know, we have multiple teachers that join us on these trips and they are amazing, inshallah. So if you'd like to learn more, you can visit celebratemercy.com slash trip or even celebratemercy.com slash trips. You're going to get the link now in the chat room. It's either trip or trips. I'm pretty sure both of them actually work. And that's where you can learn more. You can fill out a uh, your email address if you'd like us to send you more information about these trips. So these are the exciting things we're doing at Celebrate Mercy. None of this would be possible without your help, without your help. These classes that you can sign up for, all of these things, none of these would be possible without your help. So we want to encourage you guys to continue supporting our cause. Like I said at the beginning of today's session, we were at 95% of our goal. Can someone on the Celebrate Mercy team tell me what the grand total is right now on the on the uh, launch good page? Let's see if we're any closer. Maybe what the percentage is. Maybe we can kind of get an update here because I don't know. I've been like wondering what is the what is the total we've raised so far? Can we somehow get like an Eid gift and inshallah reach our goal? Uh, um, I'm looking here to see has anyone shared that information? Okay, so alhamdulillah. Okay, so the total at right now is four hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. Okay, so it's grown by about four thousand. So it's gone up. It's gone up, alhamdulillah, um, significantly. But we're still far from our final end goal. So help us to continue teaching about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you can donate at the link that you're going to see here. Uh, if the team can sh keep sharing the donation link on the chat. Um, so people can donate. It is at celebratemercy.com slash donate. We need your help, inshallah, to continue these programs. Uh, we saw that there's a huge need. There's a huge need for them, inshallah. So please, please continue to do that. I want to show you just one more thing. One more thing here. There is a way for some of you who shop on Amazon. How many of you guys actually shop on Amazon? I'm not promoting Amazon, but I do want to tell you about something that, let's see here. Can I find it? Is it here? Is it here? I don't know. Is it here? Yes, I found it. Okay. I had to go to another PowerPoint slide deck here. Um, if you see this slide here, um, if you are someone who shops on Amazon, you could be benefiting Celebrate Mercy with every purchase that you make. I'm trying to fit in all the announcements here because it's the last day, right? So bear with me. If you shop online on Amazon, you can benefit Celebrate Mercy with every single purchase you make. And because everyone is definitely shopping online during this pandemic, um, a lot of people are at least, more people are, this is how you can do it. Instead of visiting amazon.com, you would visit smile.amazon.com. You would visit smile.amazon.com, okay? So when you wanna make a purchase, this is the site you go to smile.amazon.com, and then you would select Celebrate Mercy as your chosen charity, okay? So you wanna buy something, you go to smile.amazon.com, not amazon.com, smile.amazon.com. Then you choose, on, on, the, on your settings there, you can choose which charity you want to support, and you choose Celebrate Mercy, right? That way, every time you shop by going to the smile.amazon.com, you are benefiting Celebrate Mercy. Zero, it says here, 0.5% of your purchases will benefit Celebrate Mercy. So over time, when you spend maybe thousands of dollars over time, that's a benefit. And if we can get all these people around the world who shop on Amazon to benefit Celebrate Mercy, that will help us. That is a way that it will, you know, that we can gain more funds to do more programs, inshallah. So please um, remember to use smile.amazon.com, inshallah. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us for all of these programs. 
we really, you know, we really can't thank you enough. Jazakum Allah khair. Um, I'm going to leave up on the screen here this slide uh, with the donation link. And don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on YouTube. Um, if any of you guys are interested in helping us as a volunteer or maybe like paid staff or paid work, um, just email us and, and maybe you, uh, Samar or Sara, you can post this in the chat. Um, email us at info at celebratemercy.com. If you're interested in joining our team as a volunteer or to help with any paid work that we may have available. In fact, even today, even today, um, we do need some volunteer help. We need some paid work help um, because we're actually uh, sending out a bunch of emails today to, um, to people for a final fundraising appeal. So if you can help us today, if you have the time and the capacity, um, this can be your act of sabaka for the last few hours of Ramadan, you can help us um, with our final fundraising push. So if you'd like to help us today, send an email to info at celebratemercy.com. That's info at celebratemercy.com um, and help us um, you know, contact some of, uh, some of our supporters with a final reminder to donate to Celebrate Mercy, inshallah, and help us to hit our final Ramadan goal of 500,000, which was what we raised last year in Ramadan. We're hoping to match that this year. And thank you to all those who have supported us so far. Inshallah, that will count as a huge, huge sadaqa jariya. Inshallah, there can be nothing better than connecting people's hearts to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It brings us peace. It brings us salvation on the Day of Judgment because we can be close to him, inshallah. And we hope that you guys will continue uh, staying connected with Celebrate Mercy after Ramadan. We're going to be announcing some more programs, inshallah, and we hope that you guys will join us after Ramadan for those programs for children and adults. But we got to raise the goal. We got to hit our goal first so that we can achieve all of what we want to with these programs, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you. Keep us in your prayers, especially as you break your fast today, especially on Eid. Um, Remember, celebrate mercy in your dua. Remember us, pray for us, for barakah, for blessings for our families. Our families had to endure a lot because uh, we were working long hours. You know, um, sometimes we couldn't be with our families just so we could put on these programs for uh, thousands of people around the world, inshallah. So please make dua for our families, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Take care, guys. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.